got disconnected. Could have been just a minute ago, could have been many minutes ago. Um, I, anyhow, I was saying, yeah, I really, even though I'm streaming from a Windows platform, I should be, um, oh, and even though I'm coding on a Linux platform, there's got to be some way to reconcile the two and allow me to stream um, while I'm coding. And so I would prefer to use NetBeans if I could. If I had complete and total control over what editor I use, I, generally I like how NetBeans works. I don't know how well it works with Scala projects, in particular this one, which is just a behemoth of a project. Uh, it's got lots of really complex dependencies. I don't know how well it could work inside of an editor. Um, would it be nice? Oh, okay, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, the, the only reason I discovered the stream was down is because um, my chessboard went away. Oh, looks like my whole network did something really wonky there a minute ago. Uh... So, to that end, let me go play another Atomic game. I'm totally going to win this one, you know. Oops, didn't win. That's too bad. Anyhow, um, my point is to see, can I get the Lee Chess Embed show up in my stream? And it's looking like it's not showing up. Maybe I have to play a standard game with the engine. What do I have to do to get a game to show up there? There we go. And if I play some move... Okay, so moves aren't exactly being relayed at the speed of light here. Or any other speed. Um, if I redisplay the board, it shows up, but that shouldn't be necessary. This board should automatically update. What the heck is going on? Um. Hmm. The plot thickens. All right. Um. Let me get the configure the config file thing off screen, just in case there is anything sensitive here. Uh, okay, we're back. Um, oh, it's got to reload everything. That's okay. IntelliJ. Okay. Um, the other thing is this is um, it's a project that's got like dozens of sub-projects and it's quite complicated um, but if it works it works I just don't know how well it works okay so I see my board in the upper right doesn't show the latest position um, Contrast that with, I don't know, Leech TV here, which does show the position. And if I do that, okay, that forces the position to update, but... Um, I'm just bummed that that little board in the corner, no matter how many times I've done this stream, this board never works. And I don't know why. Let me take a look at what I've changed recently. Uh, maybe something I've changed has actually broken that. I could have sworn at one point it worked. Um, but maybe I broke it. Um. <laughs> there was... Yeah, I did change a couple things here, so 
for performance reasons, or at least to help pare down um, Yeah, I made a, a couple changes here, and maybe I shouldn't have made said changes. Um, Daisy Val, this used to be just that. Um, okay. Oh, and yeah, there's another file here. Where was my other change that I should not have, or maybe should not have made? I have to really experiment with some things to figure out how they work in some cases, because, um, just, I don't know, it's difficult to know without trying anything what works and what doesn't. Um, Oh yeah, I, I remember AI perfs updater. That was an attempt I made, um, which I think I'm going to abandon at this point. Uh, that was my attempt to modernize. Um, Oops, I'm going to attempt to modernize uh, how ratings work for AIs. Um, but I think what I conclude is I just want um, I want this project to uh, want AIs to be rated the same way as everybody else, so I don't have to write my own rating code, which is probably flawed in some way anyhow. Um, All right, so we're, I, I remember I did change some dependencies. Um, let's see, where was that? Ah, get checkout, project build.scala. OK. Um, again, I'm the only person playing at the moment, so it's not like I'm shooting myself in the foot here. Um, we're going to temporarily turn off uh, my leeches instance so I can do bin uh, build dependencies. It should redetermine what's dependent upon for each package. Um, actually, while I'm in here, I should pull in updates from um, the official leech us development. It's just one thread after another, after another. Um, anyhow, once dependencies have been built, I guess I'm going to pull in uh, what changes am I talking about? Um, so there have been some commits recently as recent as 10 hours ago and 11 hours ago and such. These are things I want to pull in um, to my code. Um, but uh, I should have pulled all this before doing this build. Shame on me for not doing that. Um, hopefully I'm not going to conflict with too much. My change is are mostly isolated to code which um, uh, sets up AI games and allows AI analyses and such. Um, I've carefully avoided using the word stockfish because it's more than just stockfish. It's, um, it's also the polyglot chess, um, I guess, engine which is quite useful. All right. Well, I think I saw that last time I did a compile of this nature. I saw that big scary error warning message kind of near the end of the compilation. So hopefully that'll be done soon. Um, while that's going on, let me see. 
Uh, we go to the Leech's Development Onboarding Guide and get all my appropriate commands for um, performing the update. I think I have to first check out the master branch. Uh, again, I can't do any of this until uh, this build, which I incorrectly started, finishes. Hopefully it'll finish soon. Okay, it's done. Um, so just to clarify, I created my own branch. Get check out master. Okay. Um, next here, I wanted to what was it? Oh, get pull. Ah, crud. Um. I'm going to take that off stream for a second, um, just in case there is anything sensitive in the base.conf, but I don't think there is. Um, okay, okay. Those are changes I could actually undo, so that's cool. Um, So, yeah, actually, I'm going to put this back. Look, git status, check out <laughs> if I can spell correctly. Um, okay, now let's try to do the update again. Git pull. Pulled in all the changes. My own local changes do not conflict. Thank goodness. Um, well, there's some fun stuff there, like a neural API change. Um, anyhow. So now we'll note that um, the master branch is ahead of my branch. Um, oh. The other thing I could run is uh, this pull in submodule changes. Alright. And then we'll. Oops, let's check out this branch. Uh, see that we're not in sync. Uh, crud. How does this work? Git merge master. All right, there we go. So now if I, yeah. Now my branch is up to date, which is good. Good, good, good. Um, all my submodules are up to date. If I look at changes that have been made, um, yeah, they're pretty okay. So, what now? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember what what changes, if any, have I made to this table.js. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can actually undo that. Because I don't need that anymore. Because um, I want the AI to be rated the same way as other players are rated, so I don't need any of this fancy stuff in that regard. Um, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Um, no, I think I got my app up to date. Uh, what did I change in Setup Helper? Oh, right. Yeah, that's, oh, that's all good. Okay, so I'm going to start up Lee Chess again. That's starting. Um, 
I think I'm up to date and in sync and all this stuff. For whatever reason, this command just doesn't work for me. I'm not too concerned. Uh, I mean, I guess there's no hurt, harm in trying it out, but I don't have this program SVGO. Um, or SVGO, or however you want to say it. I don't have that. Um, so, what does this mean? This means I don't need these instructions right now. I'm already up to date with all those changes. Um, my leeches is still coming back online, but once it does get back online, I'll be able to get my game moving. Oh! <laughs> I forgot to do a UI build. Uh, whatever. Let's just build some of the user interface scripts and things. It's not strictly necessary, because LeechS does run without a UI. But it's just a lot easier to use, you know, if you can see the pieces and things like that. Um, whoopsie daisy. I should have done um, should have done build dependencies first. You know, eventually I'm gonna learn to read instructions. And that way we don't get so many errors. <laughs> See, the problem here is that I've started... Well, okay, screw it. We're going um, to terminate that. Okay. So now we're going to build Mithril, or import it, or however the heck we get it, using the simple build tool. And once that's been imported or built or what have you, um, the next we're going to build all the UI components. You know, ideally you'd want to do all this before running um, Leash Us. Um, kind of surprised that wasn't necessary to do all that, but whatever. Uh, Let's see. So what am I looking at now? Obviously it's going to be my turn here for quite some time. Um, I was just trying to get that board in the upper right of the stream working, you know? And look at where we got. Maybe I should play a game while I wait. Although I'd have to log in. So let me do that. Just playing a chess game. Oh no! Wow. Yeah, and damn Saturnalia. Okay. Well, so much for today's ladder, but I think a lot of people are suffering from weather changes anyhow, so, or all kinds of stuff. Um, so, okay, we'll play a game. Um, let's play a good one minute game, right? Try to earn back some of these bullet rating points I've lost. Also, turn on sounds so I know when it's my move. Um, I'm going to play Smith Mora just because I don't remember how to play other lines. Uh, I don't think I ever fully mastered this line either, but that's never stopped me. Yeah. Okay. Come at me. Um, check. Oh, it's not check. This is the check I was talking about. Um, okay, we'll take here. Threaten the check and stuff. And this check. Okay. You take my rook, I take yours. Um, it's actually not the trade I want. 
So we'll go back and get our knight pinned if he notices, which he didn't. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, you can smell the chaos. Knights are tricky pieces. <laughs> In case you haven't noticed. If knight e4, I take the knight. If knight there, I move, and then he's knight e3. Um, it's not a free knight, but I'll take it anyway. He's going to hit my knight. Didn't expect him to hit it that way. Okay, hit this pawn. Free bishop. Go back. Free pawn. I think I would pay a little bit better attention. Uh, end games. Alright, we've almost hit 2,000. Anyhow, is this done compiling yet? Nope. It's still going. Um, my screen's a little dark. Let me brighten it. Brighten screen. There we go. Oh no! Oh, what did I do wrong? Cannot find module mithril. Um, okay. Maybe I need to go back and reread the instructions. Uh, you think that following instructions wouldn't be so hard, but apparently it is. Alright, so we've already done the git pull and get all the dependencies. We need to run this and sbt compile. And after the compile step, what else do we need to do? Uh, we've already got that tool installed, so let me get this, run this. Um, all that's already installed. There's some instructions about how you do updates. So here we go. Okay. Let that run. It'll take a pretty minute or two to run. Um, hey, look, we got another. Oh, a CM. A candidate master. So this is a guy who's played some serious over-the-board chess. I forget where Candidate Master stands in the hierarchy of all the titles, but it's pretty good, because it is a master title. Uh, there goes my pawn. Or not. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to blockade the center. Um, he's going to take here. Maybe. Okay, so queen a3, a2, somewhere around here is my target. Um, also, if I could play b5, that wouldn't hurt my chances. Let's take there. Hold the center together. I'm not sure if I should have played that or bishop g4. Oh. That actually helps me quite a bit. Um, okay, so I still think I'm pretty cool on this side of the board. I got this counterattack if he tries any kind of nonsense. 
Um, the square in particular is attacked. Uh, oops, that's no good. Uh, I'm in trouble. I'm in big trouble. Uh, there, that's why he's the candidate master and I'm just an amateur. Queen f5? Yeah, okay. Well, that's not f5, so... HA! And this is why I'm rated 2,000-something. It's because I can spot the cheapos. Uh, I know when to resign and when to play on. Alright. He might be upset by that. He probably is. Or maybe he just doesn't care. It is bullet. Honestly, I thought he had me too. Squishy. I don't know. He, he's a really good player. I actually want to see him play some more games, because he's quite good. He knows what he's doing. Um, let's see, am I done building yet? Nope. Yeah, let's just take a look at Squishy. Also, I wonder if he's got any profile or something here. Um, I'm a chess player. I stream Bullet on Twitch soon. Message me if you're interested in some coaching. Ah, sounds like a nice guy. Also, he joined the Horde Chess group. Did he say anything here? Nope. He still seems like a really cool dude. I just say that because he plays good chess moves. And, okay, maybe he did cuss me out in my particular filter, just hit everything, I don't know, because I'm not looking at the spectator room. Um, you'll note that my part of the screen doesn't show anything in that corner. Um, let me hide that. Because that board isn't working anyhow. Oh, I bet I know what's going on there. There's probably some script somewhere which is referencing the incorrect domain name. I can verify that without interrupting the stream. Um, so let me just verify this. No, it's not a matter of the incorrect name. At least, not in any way that's obvious. Um. <laughs> I've not given up on Scala. It's all compiling, right? Alright, so yeah, Squishy's got this in the bag. One can say there's nothing squishy about that victory. Anyhow, um... Oh, right, right, right. So I need to take a look at this file. Yeah, if you were paying attention. No, you just weren't here earlier. Um, so that's why you didn't know that I was actually working while watching chess, you know? It's a good trick. All right. So, um, so this is all building and compiling and stuff. Ah, which part of the title are we doing? So this is the part where I get my project up to date, so I can even start to do any of the things that are in the title. Um, but no, what I want to do is make AI games rated um, the same way that other games are rated. 
Uh, really, what that means, like, so you can play against the machine on the official Leechess site, right? And you'll see that ratings are 1350, 1420, 1500, and so forth based on AI level. And these are the standard chess ratings. Now you'll note, you could play King of the Hill, 1350, 1420, 1500, and all these numbers, and you can switch and you could say, uh, what if I want to play 3 check? And you get the same numbers. And this is a total crock. There's no way that the AI has rated these exact numbers at all of those variants. That's just not possible. Um, and so that's what I'm kind of working on. Is seeing... Um, apparently it falls to me to do some of my AI testing. And as part of doing that testing, I want to make sure that all the AIs play at the correct strength. There are some levels of... Uh, so like AI level 1 plays at a level 1 perceived level of play and um, really the only way to do that is start measuring what are its actual ratings when it plays at these um, level 1, level 2 and so forth. Um, so yeah that's what I'm working on at the moment. I haven't actually filed an issue for this but um, I don't perceive I'm going to get very much help from Leechess on this particular issue anyway. Um, just because I think the concept of making engines play rated games uh, is relatively contentious. Just because people don't like the thought of, well, there are all kinds of things that could theoretically maybe go wrong if you start rating engine games. but. Let's not worry about theoretical things. Let's get some numbers in there, be able to measure how good the AIs are, and then release the AI to leech us. Oh, the, the CM. So we were just playing a bullet game. Um, he played some good moves. Uh, I swindled him in an endgame. And um, looked at his profile, and he says that he's actually considering starting to stream on Twitch soon. So, who knew, right? It'd be nice to... Um, he says he's from Sydney, so... Um, at least that means we'll get a different accent um, than the one that most stream or viewers are familiar with. It'd be cool to get him playing against or with Zug or something. Um, I'm going to change my blinds here. So that I can actually see the screen. The damn sunlight just keeps getting in the way. Reminding me that there's more to life than just coding and chess and games and stuff. Um. So yeah, this is the part where I've, uh, I've just updated my code and now I'm using the official commands to go build things. Like this is the installation procedure for Leechess. So step one, or prerequisite, even before you get to step one, there are prerequisites you have to um, meet. Like get all these things installed. You have to have a database. You have to have a reverse proxy web server. You gotta have some compilers, you gotta have Java. So you get all these things installed. Uh, these are prerequisites. And then, following that, these are the steps to actually install Leechess. Where you get the code, get the code that it depends upon, or get the libraries it depends upon, build those libraries, build the code, um, build the UI, do something here, I don't know, it doesn't work. Install Stockfish, um, and then install GOIP. For whatever reason, I, I don't get it. Like, why can't that just be managed up here? Anyhow. Um, oh yeah, and then configure everything after you've compiled and installed things. And once you've done all the configuration, get this additional configuration file. Um, 
and uh, here's the command to actually run LeechS. And then go to a web browser and type that in. Here's common problems you might run into. Here's common problem. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one a lot. Um, uh, here's a bug that I fixed over here. Basically, simple build tool just doesn't work in some respects. Um, and yeah, if you're updating things, here's how you update things. So I'm just filling for time while all the compilation goes on. Let's play another bullet game. Also, I should just, um, let me change my style here. Where was the thing that it's, yeah. This thing about don't display the chat. It's kind of actually annoying. Yeah. Um... Okay, so now if I refresh the main page, everything still renders fine. My style's okay. Uh, yeah, let's play a quick game with the AI. Let's play a really quick game with the AI. Oh crap. Don't take it. Don't take it. You know you don't want to. Holy moly, what's going on with this AI lag? Alright, so I've trapped your bishop. Hope you're happy. Um, oops, he's gonna check me. Get out of the check. Take. Oh, he didn't take the knight. Take the pawn? Don't take my knight? Yeah, I, I'm not expecting the AI to play these blunders. It's outperforming itself, really. Okay, it's gonna stop. Oh, wow! It's very uncommon that it just lets mate in one hang. I've never seen that. Um. <laughs> uh. Oh, hey, look! Everything compiled. All right, so theoretically, that means if I go back here, reload page, come on, it's not down. It's just, okay, I forgot to run it. So maybe it is down, but um, whatever. Yeah, if you guys want, you can also navigate to this address. Um, I wasn't feeling terribly creative when I came up with the name, and I do need to change it if this ever goes out of alpha and goes to like some... I really don't think it would ever would. I think this forever intends to remain just an alpha server. In which case it doesn't really need a good name. But um... But yeah, this is a pretty awful not memorable name. But if you're interested, feel free to go there. Um, but there's a good chance that I might be breaking things this stream while I'm trying to fix them. So... Just be aware. Hey, look, it's my turn. Isn't that fancy? Um, it's like, these are listings of players for games. Um, so how do I know if a game's rated or not? This is why I'm confused. Um, I guess if it has two usernames, it's a rated game. But I think almost all these are games versus the AI, so I'm not going to see an example of a user versus user game in that code. Oh, so let me go back, get status, it shows what's been changed. So these are changes from things that I backed out. Actually, why have I backed that out now? Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking. Well, let me think. Ultimately, I'm going to get rid of this 
Um, <laughs> that just dawned on me. Um, but okay, let me first like since I'm not getting rid of it at the moment. Um, let's see, where is it? Yeah, so in terms of managing AI performance ratings, I'll throw that back in the code. Um, so if I refresh and people beat the AI or lose to it or whatever, that's going to affect its... it's going to affect stuff. Um, Alright, so I'm done with this game. Done with these instructions again. Although, who knows when I'll need them next. But, um... So... Um, for those just arriving, and there are a few of these, so... Uh, my point is that... Um, there's this part of the code which constructs a game and expects there to be two players, or it won't, or it refuses to make the game rated if it's just one player versus the AI. And so what I've got to do is come up with a way to make, um, um, hmm, to make player a required attribute for a game. Um, So, yeah, there's a very good chance I might break something here. Uh, let's see. Oh, I get it, I get it. So there's a player class here somewhere. Um, and since it's not declared in the imports, um, it must be in the same package. Um, player ID? Oh, ID is a string. Okay, so where the heck did player ID come into? Uh, play, for lack of a better word. Um, oh, here's a thing called user IDs. So, if I take a look at game.scale, this is player maps, the user ID attribute of player maps. Um, Okay, so if I grip our user ID, and if I'm looking for, oh gosh, that's a lot. Um, where is user ID declared? Oh, it's an optional string. Yeah, I'm going to change that. Um, but first I'm going to open up the file in a mode where I'm able to write to it. So this is going to change something. This is going to change a lot of code, believe it or not. Oh, wait a second, I can't change that. Um, so at the time that a game is constructed, um, like, I, I think that everything out here in the lobby, um, I think, well, I think when you create a seek, that forms a game but doesn't have two players. Um, yes, I do want to make it required that when you're playing against the AI that you have two players. Um... But that's not something I can enforce at the time that a game is created.
Okay, it's useful that they have this uh, is AI alias. Um, <laughs> right, and is human is a good alias also. So that all is abstracted properly. But what I need is to be able to uh, have games that require two user IDs. Um, So, 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 so. Yeah, we don't have any Leech STV. We don't have any Leech STV computer. If I go back, move, and play something, and then try to refresh this, eventually it'll get picked up. Maybe. How many moves must I play before this game gets picked up? These are on the same site, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Um, maybe I have to start a new game. There we go. So my Leech STV works. In previous streams I was showing this off, and that was all cool. Um, and if I show the board here, we see that the board's in sync with that. Um, and now it's not. So there's some kind of scripting error or issue with viewing that content. Um, I'm going to try this out. I hadn't thought about this earlier, but... You know, if that should work in the little browser, that should work over here, right? And so if I make a move... Yeah, that's the problem. Um, golly, I've got so many problems that I can't even inspect what my problems are. How is it that this is supposed to work? Also, how do I dismiss my console? It's just like one issue after another after another here, but, um... See, I've got my console here, so I don't need to have it in two places. Um... So... Theoretically... Actually, yeah, that gives me another thought. Um... Going here, I should see the board keep in sync with the Leech STV, right? So if I play Knight of Six, not there. If I go here, yeah, this also is not working. Something is not keeping this board up to date. Like, if I go to the official uh, leechs.org slash developers, you'll see that as moves are yeah, as moves are played, they get relayed in the board. Um, and that should work, and it's not working. Hmm. I'd really like to get that working for what I'm trying to do. But, um, you know, maybe it's for the best that that doesn't work anyhow. Um... I'm just going to show the official Leech S board there then. Um, so, just means that I've got to edit this file. Let's say instead of showing my site, just show Leech S. So, 
save the change. And now do we have a board? And does the board stay up to date? Does this in sync with the official Lee Chess board? Yes, yeah, so this looks in sync. Yep, that all works. So never mind my site there. We don't need to have my chessboard streaming. Um, I'm just trying to make AI games rated anyhow. So where do I go? Um, Basically, I need to ensure that when game gets created through play with the machine here, um, uh, what action does this even invoke? Um, but whatever this does needs to um, needs to create a game that has two players that both have ratings. It doesn't expand, so I, I'm not sure what action that invokes. I'm not seeing a URL here, for example. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. There's a thought. What happens when I play against just a... Or I don't even know if somebody played that or if that's not happening there. Um, I guess if, if you have an anonymous player, but that player can't be rated. Um, so, okay. Uh, what's been changed again? So, yeah, we're using AIs in various places. Um, Leechus TV doesn't require the game to be timed. And... Uh, is there anything else? Oh, various other things have been commented out, which were causing problems. Um, but I think where I have to start here is with the AI config scale file. Here's where I started to make some progress. Um, not very much. But, yeah, here I'm saying that when you produce a game, you have to use player.white and player.black. Um, so, I'm going to change this back and show you what it does. So. These if true and if false kind of statements are a good way to condition code that you either want to comment out or re-enable quickly. Um, co comments also work, but true and false stand out as this is not a comment. This actually needs to be removed before you make your change and or before you commit your change to the code base. Um, so. Just to clarify, I made that little change here, right? Things got... Oh no! Server not found. That's disappointing. Uh, like, uh, let me try... Okay. Yeah, no, periodically this will go up and down and up and down as things recompile. Sorry about that. Um, so I just deployed a change that says now it'll try to make this a rated game between two players. And you'll know. Um, I got an anonymous opponent rather than getting stockfish. 
so I've got to figure out how to make Stockfish into a player kind of account. Oh. Automatically changes to DE. So are you suggesting I, like, maybe I should have a DE localization? Um, what happens if I try that? Oh, if I try that, I'm just going to get the EN prefix. Um, let's see. Huh. Would you look at that? Guess who's challenging me? Now seriously, you've got to guess because I have no idea. But okay. I'm going to lose this against whoever this dude is. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, I will look into some of that and see if I can figure it out. But um, In the meantime, oh man, I'm going to lose. Definitely gonna either run out of time or who knows what. Okay, at least it's not a computer. Because no computer would have played that move. Um, okay, let's get this over. Put this back. Move that up. Free queen. Damn it. You got me. You got me, man. Well done. The main reason I took that game is so I could see in the log file what happened when the game was created. Um, not gonna lie. Um, a lot of stuff got created. Actually, it doesn't tell me very much, anyhow. Yeah, there are all kinds of problems with the moves I'm making. Nobody suspects the Spanish Inquisition. Uh... What the hell? My mouse is not going where I want it to move. Got me again. Well done. Note that I'm not the one issuing the rematches. <laughs> I'm just trying to get the coding going, you know? I could give myself all kinds of handicaps if I wanted to, but whatever. Yeah. It would have been a better game if I could actually win it, but I don't play half zero very often, because I'm bad at it. Um... Okay, so... Uh, what do I do? <laughs> um, so I'm trying to find out what's the part of the code that does game.make based on an, that play with the machine button. Also, so I don't get any further distractions. Um, uh, let's edit my privacy and say, just okay. Didn't mean to do that, but just turn off challenges so I don't have to deal with that while I'm trying to make progress. Um, 
so where is the thing that's making the games? Um, um, so all these things are capable of making games, I guess. Uh, okay, that's not helpful. Um, do I need to do game.make? And just search everything to see what makes a game? Okay. So those are games that are made based on all kinds of different mechanisms. Um, this is the one I need to change. So is there anything I can change in that AI config.scala? Um, like how do I force this to make a game using an actual user? Um, and why does the why is there a player dot white and a player dot black? Oh, there's a there must be. I am so confused. How does this work? So I copied this player dot white and player dot black from other code. It really doesn't tell me a whole lot because um, I'm not sure where that player instance. Assuming that is an instance, I'm not sure where it comes from. Um, like, we'll com contrast this, for example, with, um, I don't know, rematcher.scala, where, um, here's game.make. And let's see, how does that work? This is okay, that's possibly too confusing because that involves another game. Um, let me look at this one. All right, so here we are. This creates a game. with gameplayer.white and gameplayer.black. Um, what's the difference between gameplayer and just player? Like where, how do I get my context for, um, I mean surely there's not a global variable that anybody can edit in any context called Okay, I'm thinking about procedural code. This is actually functional programming. This is Scala. So this is different. Um, yeah, you're playing against Anonymous because I'm in the middle of making changes related to the engine. Um, I'm trying to make it such that Stockfish is a player. Or all the AIs are players just the same way that you and I are. New inbox message. I need to turn off messages. Okay. Well, this is what we gotta do. Gotta do what we gotta do, guys. Um, there we go. Whatever. Alright, so. Back here. One might argue, why do I have the tab even open if I'm trying to ignore it? I don't know. Um, so... Oh, I think I know who that player is now. There's one person who would be that anxious about both playing me and messaging me about playing me. Anyhow, um... Yeah, where does this gameplayer.white come from? 
can I copy this code? Y2. And try to copy this just literally over here. And uh, comment out what used to be here. Because I have a feeling we're going to need some of that, but not all of it. Um, so this used to create players. Um, I'm almost certainly going to get some kind of error message here. So I reload the page to compile everything. Because simple build tool knows that I need to recompile things. Okay, yeah, game player is not found. Um, okay, so here's game player's declaration. Uh, if I go over here. Uh, da, da, da. So I need to make this look more like that. And let's try reloading the page again. Compiling a new Scala file into a class file. It looks like at least that compilation made some progress. Um, get my lobby to reload. Click play with the machine. Get a broken pipe. Well, that could get messy. Hopefully there's no leaky water. Um, man, that guy's just... Um, I see how he's like apparently all over the place playing games now, which is kind of cool. Whatever. I don't care. Like, I'm the head admin on the server, so I could just nuke players at will. Um, not that I intend to do that, but... You know, if this guy who took my Twitch name decides to do anything silly, I could do something about it. Um, okay, but yeah, here I am versus an anonymous player. Um, it's not exactly what we want. It's really difficult to read the log, you know. Um, huh, I did not know I was the super admin, but also, um, Why can I not read that? I should just purge the log, because that's not... I mean, that's all dated anyhow. I don't need that information. Um, but you would think that when I go to play the engine... Um, that there would be something meaningful here. Um, apparently there's not. Um, so, how do I ensure that this white player and black player um, both correspond to AI players? Or that um, one corresponds to the human player, one corresponds to an AI of the appropriate level. AIs are players too. You know, I don't know, but um, there are ways I could obtain his IP address and try to track him down and stuff, you know. Actually, the easier way would be to look at um, other information that he might have put in while registering the account. Not that I'm going to do that, because I don't really care who it is. And if whoever it is does tick me off, I could easily do something about it. Um, 
But no, I have to figure out how can I produce an AI player. Um, like, why doesn't this code work like the normal code? Um, Why can't this just create games with the AI like it creates games with human players? Um. Yeah, let me actually look at what uses this. Maybe I could just change the hook to use... Um, yeah, here's this thing called Game Generator. What is a Game Generator, and where is it used? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to um, I'm going to disable this class's ability to generate games, or the fact that other classes know that it generates games. Um, so this is going to pose a problem for sure. Uh, Because now whatever is expecting that class, that should cho that should cause a compile error. It really should. Uh, okay, we're gonna try that again. Give me a compile error, or am I gonna see a runtime error instead? I thought the Scala was a uh, language with hard types. Um, Okay, there we go. Um, Oh, I see. Wait. So with that with keyword implies multiple inheritance then. I did not know Scala could do that. Now I know. Um, apparently. Or if not multiple inheritance, that's some something similar. Um Okay, so I'm not too thrilled about any of that. Um, hmm. <laughs> okay, so I want to comment this out because I don't want any of that code game run. So, I mean, surely, okay, if that doesn't present a compile error, um, hang on, class AI config needs to be abstract since method game is not defined. Okay. Uh, hang on, I know what I can do. You know, rather than just outright breaking the code, um, 
And what we can do here is val asdf equals and have this run two commands, or rather I can just embed my command up here. Um, which is thread.dumpstack, I think. I think that forces a, the, uh, forces a stack dump. Or is it called stack dump? I don't remember. Scala log stack trace. I just want to print a stack trace. How do I do that? Is it stack dump or dump stack or something? Um, it was... Oh God, there were so many ways to do this. Um... Because I don't have a stack. I just want to print it out. Alright, here we go. Wait, is this it? No, that's just the closed channel exception. I won't see an actual stack trace until I actually click this. And now I should see... Yeah, here we go. Dump stack. That was right. So I see this is called by processor.ai. And I think what this means is that I want to use not the AI thing to produce a game. Um, but I want to have it delegate to the actual game creator um, instance. So that said, um, where's that thing that was here? I was looking for game generator. API config, AI config, config. Um, but I think all of these produce a game. Actually, config must be abstract. Um, friend config must be create a game with a friend. And I guess that's kind of the closest thing I have to. Um, a game creator that it's going to work for my purpose. Um, because what if you want to create a game not with a friend but with Stockfish? Or what if Stockfish is your friend? Which it totally isn't, but um, yeah. Oh, hang on. So my point was that I want to have this processor class. Where was it? This one. Leela setup processor in processor.scala. Um, line 28. That's the one I want to have delegate not to AI but to something else. Okay. Um, or at least that's where I want to try starting. What package was that in again? I'm forgetting this. This is in setup. So I want to go over to setup source main processor.scala AI. Uh, I think it was line 28. Yeah. And I'm just going to change how this works. Um, Okay, so I see this accepts an AI config. Actually, this gives me an interesting thought. Rather than... <laughs> yeah, rather than change this code... Actually, no, I do want to change that, I think. I'm so confused. All right, so we're going to comment that out, which is going to cause problems because uh, other code needs that code. OK, with clause is a trait. So it's not multiple inheritance. It's 
it's something it's a trait uh, I guess it's something attributive um, it seems to integrate so seamlessly um, just because functional programming allows for better or cleaner abstractions than um, procedural programming all right so AI is not a member of a processor blah 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 Oh, if I just wanted to do that, I could always look up the stack trace here and see what called processor. It says controller set up a non fun apply thing and set up dot scale up. Line 40. Um, uh, there is no setup dot scale up. <laughs> Um, did I just imagine that? No, there is a setup that scale up, but it's in the controllers package, not under the modules package. Okay. Um, um, so if I go to line 40 here, yeah says so here if you're dealing with an AI okay so the friend form is different from the AI form and I get that when you're playing with the AI you want to specify what level you're playing against whereas against a friend you don't really have that kind of control um, yeah um, yeah, no, you're right. You're getting the same compile error stuff that I'm getting at the moment. Um, let's see. So this... How can I reuse some of this when producing a game with an AI? If... Okay, I mean, here's a challenge thing. Okay, here's the part where it says create a game and await an opponent. Oh, here's creation of a friend form. Um, but we were saying it was line... Okay. Line 40 here that was causing a failure because AI is not a member of processor. Let me take a look at how other forms are processed. Okay, so here's the friend processor. Um, so it uses env.forms.friend. I'm trying to remember what what's captured when you challenge a friend. Variant, time control, and rated and color. Whereas when you challenge an engine, variant, time control, um, level, color. You don't get to choose whether it's rated or not, you just choose a level. Uh, so those forms differ. But yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with the um, this AI code. You say it's um, 
a game from the perspective of this player. Uh, I'm going to grab these eight lines of code and put them next to um, this code here and see like what's the same and what's different. Okay, so do we have a user ID? Um, What's this user ID here? How come this has a user ID and this has a full ID? I'm very confused. Why are there two different things? Oh, okay, so user ID is the person we're challenging. There's full ID is the... Hmm. I'm sensing that somebody's abused these data structures. So this needs to include... Yeah. This needs to... Uh, right, so this is we're challenging a friend. Where did our challenge go? I'm confused about a lot of things. How... Okay, so here's where you join a game. Okay, maybe I don't understand that. That's okay. Um, still, I can make processing of um, these requests more similar. sudo rm-rf slash. Yeah, done that. Been there. Don't want to do that too often. Um, okay, so if I just try to match these method signatures up, they do match up. Wow, this syntax looks really painful to use. I don't know. It's functional programming, so it's very minimal. Um, it's just you can do a lot of things. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, this is going to reload successfully and all that, but yeah, what I'm trying to do is just get to play against an engine the same way I get to play against a person. Um, and make engine games rated. Oh, Agent. It's rated for mature audiences because people like, um, don't necessarily behave. And it's just kind of difficult to monitor and control all that. So rather than just disabling chat altogether, um, and rather than turning off my mic and blacking out anything that could offend anybody, I just assume that there's going to be something offensive said. <laughs> but you know, I mean, we could experiment with this is not one of those kinds of streams like here let, let's try some let's try an experiment here where I just block out anything that might offend somebody who's not a mature audience okay ready we've blocked out anything that could be offensive and now we can just have this stream for not a mature audience
So okay, that that's. Yeah, I know. Why don't you go set up a stream like that and you can go watch it? I think you might be the only person watching. Um. Yeah, so this is Scala. Um, if you want to know what Scala is, this is Scala. I don't entirely know what it is either. It's a programming language for general software applications. It's got very strong static typing, meaning things are pretty tightly enforced before you even compile the code. Um, this is functional programming, and so like functional programming requires that you um, define functions, and then you can. Um, doesn't really matter, like uh, in terms of machine code, what that translates to, but you can define very abstract mathematical functions. Um, so like something like math function here where it says do this step, then do this step, then do this. This translates to here's a context um, and here's an expression and here's an expression and evaluate all these expressions. Or at least evaluate the ones that have to be evaluated for this block here to return a value. So that's, I can't really sum up functional programming without giving an hour-long lecture explaining it, but... It's offensive content. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, Wikipedia is the best chess site, or best site. Um, Did you donate your three dollars? <laughs> You know, if everybody were to donate three dollars, they'd stop showing those annoying banners. That's actually a really good point. One of these days, I should donate to. Wikipedia. Although they would probably say, Never you know, mind. we probably want four dollars now. Yeah, that's uh, or of... or we're gonna keep showing this banner. Mm hmm. Greedy capitalist pigs. <laughs> Whatever. Say what you will. Your words, not mine. Um. But no, seriously, like, here, I'm trying to see how how does this code work. I want this to generate a game that's played against the Stockfish AI. Um, so I see, like, comparing AI with friend here. Value point of view is equal to blame POV. So this line of code's the same. Um, let me grab these three lines of code and just put them here. Um, replace the word friend with AI and see like what looks the same and what looks different. So how is this different than what's here? Oops. What's the deal? Something's different. This block of code doesn't look the same size as that block of code. Oh, there's been a link. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me I need to update my whitelists. But, you know, whatever. You do recognize that I have the ability to, like, nuke the entire database and start over at any time. So, as long as people behave, I won't have to do that. I'm not sure that having a group's a bad thing, but just the more things that are out there, the more potential there is for people to not be nice. Um, okay, so... <laughs> so what's the deal here? <laughs> Save config with AI. AI play. Okay, I get that. Um, okay, so on start, do all this stuff. Um, wait, so here we the heck? It 
So, I'm confused. This says don't check the rating. Or don't check whether or not to... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm confused because I duplicated the code myself. Um... Hmm... I'm gonna do something which I'll probably regret later. Um... Wait, no, I need that check in place. Not for my purposes, but... Uh, I am gonna need it later. Let's remove it for now, though. Okay. Um, actually, there's no reason for me to do that, so I'm just going to leave it be. But what do I do here? So this creates a game, um, prints out things to the effect that it started the game, and um, if the person playing against the AI is a human, returns that there's been some success in creating the game. Um, that all looks fine, actually. Uh, so... Hmm... So what's the deal here? We create a game either way. I'm so confused. Did I actually change any lines of code in the course of that vacillating over? No, I didn't. Um. Ah, Joey. You show up in a programming stream and you say offensive things, and I don't understand why. <laughs> like, I didn't even advertise this as a chess stream, and you came all the way out here and then said something about chess. And this is coding. This isn't chess. So, like, you're drunk, go home, have a nice warm breakfast, and whatever. You're drunk, go home. Um... Yeah, the bar for what's offensive is set pretty low. I know. So, let me create a game against the AI and see if this works, which it totally won't. Um, uh-huh, yeah. Everybody believes the you. So... I mean, yeah, this is still creating games with the anonymous player. Um, but what bothers me is that this list is completely empty. It should have at least my player name in that list. That's what's confusing me. Um, so something is just weird here. Um, so let's see, where is the play with a friend configuration thing defined? It's over here. Alright, so what happens if I compare that with, say, there's got to be an AI config file, right? Okay, so that's kind of messy. Um, let's get a more useful comparison. Alright, so... Here we are. <laughs> Rating range. There's an interesting concept. I hadn't even thought about that. But yeah, why not filter AIs by rating the same way we filter players? That seems to actually make a great deal of sense, but it's not something I'm going to bother with unless I have to. Um, 
But no, I really like that idea. We could just filter AIs by rating. But what else is different here? Um, okay, so there's a mode which indicates rated or not rated. You know, the more I think about this, um, why don't I just try to abuse what's already there? Like, why don't I just add casual, rated, and some kind of computer control somewhere here. It's not going to be ultimately what Leechus wants, but it would get me where I need to go. Or I change this to play with a friend or play with a computer. They should not be two separate buttons. I'm far more likely to make progress that way than the other way. Actually, what I need to do. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Um, yeah, so first of all, get diff on this file. So I think all my meaningful changes here are not really that meaningful. So I'm going to revert that. Um, and, you know, I'm going to try to make all AI games rated, but that's not going to apply anyhow. Um, but my point is that now if I go to diff these files, um, yeah, here's the issue. So these both create a game. Um, the only real thing is this AI config BSON handler versus friend config BSON handler. Um, And basically, I just want I want to somehow have this challenge a friend thing just produce a request against the AI instead of producing one against um, uh, or something that just lingers out there. Uh, Or maybe I just need to let the AI accept these seek requests or lobby requests. Um, what other config files do we have here? We have a... there's got to be some kind of... yeah, there it is, hook config. Uh, so, this creates a seek. Um, and I just need to allow AIs to accept these seeks. That might be an easier way for me to accomplish what I want to do. Um, because, yeah, AIs are going to fluctuate in rating ranges anyway. I'm trying to program, I'm still, in a sense, designing what it is that I want to do. <laughs> um, I'm kind of tempted to just put something server-side that periodically picks up these hooks. Like, when somebody puts a challenge out here, it says, I just want to create a game with anybody. They could say members only, humans only, or something. And things that aren't humans only could be matched by a computer. Or they might have to specifically request a computer. I don't care. But, um... 
but make this function more like things operate on other chess servers where engines are able to accept seeks. Um, so... How does this whole hook thing work? Hmm. Yeah, so I'm trying to design... Um, right now there's a pretty obvious flaw and that, like, if you're playing a standard game, the AI ratings are 1190, 1249, and all these other numbers. But if you change what kind of variant you're playing, all the numbers are still the same. Which kind of implies that the AI's, AI level 1 is 1190, regardless of what kind of variant you're playing. And that's just a design flaw. There needs to be a better way to um, challenge AIs and such. So, uh, I'm trying to think of how it is. How can I get this such that uh, AIs can play against players? Um, just learning more and more about how the site works. Like, what if I wanted a computer to be able to put a seek out there, right? Um... I'm going to do something wacky here. Uh, I'm going to try registering a new account. You know, it would work better if I could actually defeat the CAPTCHA. Um, these CAPTCHAs are pretty hard. We've successfully made CAPTCHAs that computers can beat more easily than humans. Okay. So, there I am. I've created a Stockfish account. Not that any of that matters, but... Yeah, basically, if anybody else created one, I could have deleted it. Um, with extreme prejudice. Okay, so now I just need to find a way um, that I can get Stockfish to play under the username Stockfish. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, wait, this is all data driven anyhow, right? It's like when somebody puts a seek out there and says, I want to play a rated game. I know. Hang on. Where'd my buttons go? You can't find a rated game. Right? Oh. Where did my buttons go? <laughs> Click casual. Yeah, if I hit casual, then I get the buttons. Um, rated, you don't have the option. It's random. Yeah, it shouldn't be that... Well, regardless, like, these are the buttons to produce a game. There is no button to produce a game here. That could be an issue. That's definitely an issue. I understand why. Um, if you can't produce a game, it's kind of hard to play a game. This is an example of something that's really boring to figure out in the programming world. <laughs> what did I break? How did I even break something? Um...
so none of that really changed. That change is okay. How did I break it? I'm impressed. Um, oops. I mean, that's not going to break anything. Um, that's pretty spectacular. Let me just try reloading this. Am I seeing any um, exceptions on this side? I get a 404 on. Come on. Where's my console? 404 not found. I'm trying to get this. That's okay. I don't need an image. I just need a button. At least now I know why my images aren't there. Yeah, no, I, I did a diff. And, um, like, diff shows that, sure, I've changed a few things, but none of them are particularly relevant to the production of a game. Like, here I'm saying that, um, log, when we create a game, log whether or not the game is supposed to be rated. I mean, that's pretty low impact. Let me try playing a game with the machine, see if that works. Okay, so here's my game. That's fine. But if I create a game, and I click Rated, then my button's... Okay. Element. There is a button. How There's about something. that? There's a thing. You know what I noticed is it didn't seem like the assets were loading. Yeah, no, I, I'm able to produce, like, even without the images, I can still um, do stuff like this. I don't need the image assets, even though um, they make the site look nicer. I would inspect element on that and see what is there, because yeah. maybe it's something that got renamed. Okay, so here's a class color submit. Expand? Let's expand that. So we got a button. We've got a button. <laughs> so they're there. Yeah, they are there, like I was saying. Oh. It's just I can't click on them. Is there something that's over them? Like Z indexed? Um No. Well, I mean this isn't mentioning a Z index for that element. Well no, there could be something that's getting placed in front of it. Sure, there could. Um, It'd be tough to figure out, though. Yeah, well, that's my point, is that in looking at it this way is pointless. Even if you could solve it this way, this is not the way you want to be doing it. Um, so I can't produce my rated game against 2,700 rated players. Hmm. Actually, whenever I switch that toggle button, no. Well, Did you works. change anything in the JavaScript? So let's. Okay, my point was that I just want to make a seek here, and have nobody find it, and just so I can look and see like where does this record exist? And can Stockfish make something like that too? Yeah. Now I, I think Stockfish should be able to produce these things if not <laughs> accept them. Um, Um, so, I'm not sure what happens when I create this thing. Like, there's got to be a record in some table for that, or at least in memory. 
Um, so grip our hook uh, within scala files because I know that it creates a hook. I just don't know what a hook is. And our hooks persisted in any way. Such that I could say create a hook from the database. There's a hook config thing. And there's a hook function. Um, let's take a look at hook config. All right, so hook config is defined inside several different places, or at least it's used in all these places. Um, I guess I want to start by looking at this file and seeing. Like, what do we do with a hook? Um, huh, so this is defining all the attributes of a hook. Extends human config. So what the heck? Why should that have to extend human config? And where is human config? Really, that should have to extend player config. And a player could be a human, it could be an engine. I don't care. Um, where is this... Uh, where is this human config? Okay, here's human config. Extends config. Yeah, but there's nothing about this which requires humanity, right? Base human configs out there. Maybe I should just call Stockfish a human. All I want is just to be able to run the engine and have it play rated games. And I don't really care uh, how that works. You know, maybe I'm attacking this from the wrong angle. Maybe once the game is started, I just allow Stockfish to make the moves, and then later I worry about how do I start a game. That's probably where I want to look at first. Um, so... How is it... So I know that there's an AI module. Um, but I don't know what uses any of these classes. Interesting. So, 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 so. Um, so I think actor API. Well, I'm just guessing at this point. There's no point in my guessing. Um, 
Let me take a look at client. I need to get one of those stereotypical Star Trek outfits and then wear it to the new Star Wars movie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody needs to do that. <laughs> oh, there's no way it hasn't been done. Yeah. yeah, before I start creating new things called player config, I better start by getting something that works first and then worry about renaming things appropriately. Get it? Get the thing working, and then worry about what's the right way to do it. At least with something this complicated, um, where there's still discovery to be done. Like, it'd be one thing if um, I understood how this all works, and then I was going to start coding, but really I'm trying one thing at a time, and the only way I can learn more, either than, <laughs> other than continually asking questions of the developers, um, and wasting all their time it would be just me trying things and seeing what happens. Or <laughs> just wear a banana suit. <laughs> just wear a costume that has nothing to do with Star Wars. Okay, so that's weird. Oh, there's two places that use AI.client. Um, so let's take a look at this. Basically, I want to say, like, if you're playing against an AI, use the AI client. Um, are there not two clients? Um, Okay, so, yeah, if you're saying the human needs to do something, um, yeah, this is terribly unintuitive. Can I put it in that to see what it does? I guess I can. Um... Here's, where is engine even used here? So I just want to say call AI instead of calling human. Um, how do I do that? What in the code cares about whether or not the player's human or not? Unfortunately, too much, but, um... Oh yeah, why can't humans do analyses, too? Why... Why can only the AI do that? Um... Really, this partitioning of things based on whether it's AI or human seems really arbitrary. It's convenient for the original developer, but inconvenient for anybody who wants to do anything beyond the original developer's conception of how things work. Um, Alright, so... <laughs> oh my god, they created these things human play, which calls player die human to make the move. 
AI play calls playable.ai, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so... They've come up with so many abstractions. You know... Okay, so I've been trying this. I've been learning Scala, getting a better appreciation of how all this works. I think I'm now in a position to start making recommendations to the original development team, because this code is too brittle. If I start touching it, things will break all over the place. And really, integration tests. Well, the integration test is entirely here. You just run the site and see if it all integrates. That's not an integration test. <laughs> no, that's a system test. Um, no, an integration test, yeah, would be something t testing a submodule of all this. And there are integration tests in place, but I'd have to even rewrite... Um, Hey, like well, the, the problem is that they understand this code far better than I do, so I'm not qualified to write the integration test. It's not that an integration test would be a bad idea, it's just that um, I'm not qualified to write it. If you can port some kind of chess AI into whatever, into submodule, I can make you a Rails server. Mm -hmm. That just runs the site part flawlessly. No, the site's not the problem. It's the... Um, no, the APIs would be beautiful. Yeah. And we have full integration testing. I mean, they've got integration tests to find. It's just, <coughs> like... It's not their choice of architecture, which is the problem. It's um, the way they did their application design, which is problematic. Yeah. Um, which is great for the few developers who put this together, but um, it really allows them tight control over how this all works. Hmm. There, there's a saying that if you've coded something in the most clever way that you know how to code, then by definition you're not clever enough to code something to help you debug it. Hmm. And so... It's kind of like how the human brain named itself. Well. And the, the issue there is that if you've come up with the most brilliant way to code this, um, and it's as optimal as possible, um, then just by definition you're presently not equipped with the skills to debug it. Come on, I just so told you one So you either of the... have to learn how to debug it, or you have to dumb down the program. I just told you one of the most mind-bending facts in the whole world, and you didn't even take it, the time to stop and appreciate it. <laughs> What do you mean that the human mind named itself? <laughs> a human brain called the human brain a brain. What do you mean? It named itself. It's the only thing in the entire universe. What is this naming concept that you talk of? <laughs> it's what you call something. Define call. Um, to beckon or refer to. Define refer. <laughs> I'm going to murder you. <laughs> See, this, this is how you get infinite regress. And you think you're clever by coming up with deeper e, but it's not that clever. <laughs> so anyhow, um, yeah, I think I've taken this to a point where I know how to make the recommendations as to what needs to be improved. I actually know where to do it, too. Um, so one second while I load this up. So a while ago... Um, fellow chess fan opened an issue here. Um, let's see. Here we go. So there's... Oh. Wait, what the heck? Why are there two issues? I don't think this is the right one. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, this is the issue where our national master, our good old friend here, says that It'd be nice to have an API which allows everything that, like, a standard ICC would offer. Or a standard chess site offers. And while I think that might be a bit too broad of a statement, I think he's got some points that, you know, what we have is quite different than what a standard site offers. And after having done considerable investigation, I mean, okay, sure, admins point out that, yeah, you can do a lot of really useful things. Um, and he changed the title from API for bots to improving API. Um, 
Let's see. Yeah, I think his point, and I was talking with him earlier, is that he wants to make this more bot-friendly. Okay. So, here we go. I'm gonna follow up on this issue. Um, would like um, an API which allows the following. Bot engines may play rated games. of all variants and have engines may may seek and yeah let's see engines may play rated games um Engine users, just to be as explicit as possible. Um, uh, users <coughs> may search. games filter live games um, let's see and I know that this link exists I know this shows some games but we want to be able to do what Follow as many games as possible, sort them by highest writing, title, etc. By highest rating, title, spectators, kibitzes, material fluctuation, etc. Um, Let's see, how else, what else can I do here? Um, engine users may kibitz on player games. Um, human users may analyze games. Let's see. Basically, anything a player user may do, an engine user may do, and vice versa. And additional game filtering. Um, Capability would be nice to to produce a stream um, entertaining to a live audience in the same in a similar manner to how uh, professional chess events are covered by other sites and organizations. Um, 
so let's see. Why do I want engines to be able to play rated games? Why not? Um, Let's see. Don't we have that problem already? Well, yeah, that's the thing. And I'm not saying that I'm going to get all of these things. Um, Okay, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Well, the thing is, there wouldn't be a concept of cheating anymore. It's just if you use an engine, you get labeled as an engine user. And, I mean, okay, you use an engine. And most people want, won't want to play you, but... Maybe some people do like playing against dungeons. I don't know. Understand that the idea of allowing engine users into tournaments, simuls, etc., would be unpopular. And on that basis, I recommend against allowing engine users into those. Um, but there but in my opinion, there are no other issues with allowing... Hmm. I'm just telling you, the really people... ...fits of allowing engines to play games outweigh uh, the negatives. 
There are going to be people who try to get away with not having the engine tag. Well, then they're just going to get labeled. We have a neural network detector. Yeah. So um, they're just going to make a new account. We have all kinds of ways we can trace these things. And we have a neural network detector, which learns, based on people who have previously abused the rules, what are the vectors by which people try to abuse the system. I'm actually really impressed that they put that much thought into that. Yeah. No, it's wow. amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> it, you, you've got a team of developers coming up with a really strong engine detector. We just need to ensure it's properly configured and set up and everything, but it's in place. It should work. Um, and, um, yeah, I think this is a good recommendation. I don't see any issue with it. It does specify in far greater detail than what he was suggesting. And these are specific proposals that can be voted up or down upon. Um, did have some discussion earlier this morning, and I've got some optimism that at least some of this might get done. But regardless, it'd be nice if, at least for my own testing, gosh, could I run my engine against my older version of the engine and do so through this interface? Because how else can I do a proper test? I'm kind of screwed in that regard in that I can't promote my changes to LeechS until they've been tested, but I can't test them because there's no interface to test it. So, um, basically, I mean, you know, either they're going to help me or I'm going to come up with my own framework. Maybe in Ruby and Rails, I don't care. I love Ruby. It could be fun. It'd be an adventure. We'd all learn something from it. Um, but, yeah. It's, it, it's been an interesting experiment. Yeah, there is, there's multiple GitHub repositories. The main one is this one. Uh, it's just called Leela. And you'll find that it's got um, 1,636 stars. So people really like this project. Um, well, why not 1,300 whatever seven? Because you haven't starred it yet. Well, why haven't you starred it? Uh, Do you not like it? Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, let's see. Various notifications. Nothing too important. Sometimes if I'm following those in greater detail. Um, yeah. I I'm anti-American. I know, right? So anyhow. Um, it's been an interesting experiment. I am going to roll back the changes because this just got too way out of control here. Um, so basically I have to roll back, I don't even remember which of these have to be rolled back. Uh, okay, that can stay, that can stay. That all can stay. Um, um, okay, what else is different? Uh, this can go back. This um, actually not all of that's going to go back. So I have to manually revert these changes. Um, Let me revert this, revert that. I've got a better understanding of how all this works, and hopefully my criticism or critique or recommendation is better received for having what I learned. Um, okay, that's all fine. Let's see. Um, what else has changed? Um, so we've gone through game. Let's take a look at round. Um, okay, yeah, this can go back. This file and the rematcher can go back. Um, 
so that was round. Get diff uh, TV. Yeah, that can stay. Get diff setup. Um, this can go back. Uh, and I think I've reverted this morning's changes because this.